we are a go. All right, so good afternoon and welcome to February 2021's uh, Networking at Noon. My name is David Walton, the Event and Program Manager for Tompkins uh, Chamber. Um, today, we are going to do a deep dive into some industry insights around the retail industry and kind of a state of retail in Tompkins County. Um, I would like to extend a huge thank you to our series sponsors, Hilton Garden Inn, Bailey Place Insurance, Sharaba Walker, and Sheldrake Point Winery for making Net at Noon possible. Um, we're really excited to partner with these local businesses here in town and to bring you programming every month with our Networking at Noon series. So a huge shout out to them. Um, something that we typically like to do at the start of a Net at Noon is to allow our attendees, if you have something that's going on at your respective business or something that's coming up in the community in the next month that you wanna let people know about, we allow people the space to do like 60 to 90 second elevator pitches um, about your business or about something that you, like I said, may have going on. Uh, no pressure, of course, if you don't have anything or don't have anything to share yet, um, we do have some space at the end for that as well. But if anyone would like to utilize this time to let us know that they have something going on, we'd love to hear from you. And I do see Jan has her virtual hand raised to share something out. So uh, I'll let you start us off, Jan. I uh, just wanted to mention that I just got a call from the printer and for everybody who is waiting for the 2021 copy of the guide to being local, uh, it is being delivered to my store this afternoon. So. Um, the first, first batch of them will be heading off to Ithaca Maid. So for all the people who usually sell them, who are part of it, um, I will have them probably organized by tomorrow morning. And it's always a terrifying time. This is when I find out whether I've forgotten anybody, done any typos or whatever. So um, let the wild rumpus begin. Awesome, thank you so much, Jan. And something else that I would like to offer to everyone if you have a link to a website or some additional resources that you would like people to know about in addition to a presentation, feel free to utilize the chat and share those links in the chat as well. So people can go directly to your page at some point or save it in a Google tab. Um, next up, the person's hand who I saw next was Mr. Andrew Hart. Thanks, David. Um, I just wanted to share with the group. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm with Sherab Walker, we're a local CPA firm here in Ithaca. Um, with everything that's been going on this year, the various stimulus packages, it sounds like another one's being debated right now and, and probably impending passage soon. Um, I wanted to share that we do have um, an email sign up where we're sharing the latest on all of the guidance that comes out around you know PPP, um, stimulus checks, any new programs that come out. Um, so if your businesses are in need of, of guidance there, um, I will drop a, a link in the chat here. It's free to sign up. You can unsubscribe at any time. Um, so there's, there's nothing to worry about there. Uh, but we just want to share the, the guidance that we're putting together. Um, so as I said, I'll, I'll drop that link in and uh, invite anybody to sign up that's interested. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing that link, Andrew. Um, next up, the next hand I saw was Lisa Swayze from Buffalo Street Books. muting. <laughs> Hi. So um, I just put this in the chat, but I did want to share we have a great event coming up for kids and families on Saturday the 28th, 27th. What is that date of Saturday? 27th at three o'clock. Um, the author and illustrator of a really fantastic new children's book called The ABCs of Black History are going to be doing a story hour with us. And um, Dr. Nia Nunn is gonna to talk to them about how he's already started using this book in classrooms throughout the county um, this month for Black History. And uh, it's really exciting. It's a great book. Everyone should read it. You, you will learn something no matter who you are. And uh, it's a pretty cool opportunity to have the author and illustrator with us. Um, I just want to piggyback on that really quick. I actually know, Lisa, that is a huge book right now um, in the Black community for people with children. So can you just tell us that date and the time again? It is on the 27th, 3 o'clock. Um, I put the link in here so you can sign up, and it's a free event. 
but if you want to buy the book, you can do that. That would make us happy too. Um, and we're working with um, Dr. Mia and Krista um, at Ubuntu Lab and Bridget Huberman at Children's Reading Connection. We're trying to we're trying to get enough money together to buy a copy for everybody in the every child in the district. We'll see what we can com come up with, but it's. Well, Lisa, Lisa muted again, but it's okay. I just want to say that's a really great way to kind of put a cap on the it, toward the end of Black History Month. So huge shout out to you guys for doing that. Um, the next hand I saw, Miss Anne Marie Adams. Hi, I'm just reminding everyone that we have very talented young professionals at Ithaca College, also in the Park School, but also across campus who are looking for summer opportunities. We have a large volume of our students that are opting to stay in Ithaca this summer. So whether it's paid, unpaid, I've left my email address. I would love for you to uh, drop us a line uh, if there's an opportunity. It can be short term, long term, uh, can be a year. We'll take any offer that you may have and present it to our students. Thank you. Thanks, David. No worries, Anne-Marie. Glad to put a name with a face and get the chance to meet you. Um, all right, so I see that we have no more hands. So now for the sake of time, I do want to throw things over to our chamber president, uh, Ms. Jennifer Tavares, to introduce our panelists today and get us started with our programming. Jennifer. Thanks, David, and it's great to see you all. Thank you so much for making time to be here today. I think there's going to be some great information shared. I think there's going to be a little bit of sort of preaching to the choir. I do think most of us understand and value um, our local small businesses and particularly our retailers. And I know that we all do what we can to support them, but um, I'm looking forward to the conversation and the information that everyone's gonna share today. Um, I, I know that you're very familiar with the Chamber and the Downtown Ithaca Alliance and Local First Ithaca stressing, you know, all throughout the year why it's so important to shop locally and particularly to shop with small businesses. Obviously, the, the major market disruptions that have happened in the last uh, year or so have really caused many retailers to, um, you know, I mean, first of all, just the trauma and, and, and the triage of the circumstances and everything that everyone has gone through, and particularly for those of you here who are retailers, um, they just have a tremendous amount of respect for um, for you and, and your work and what you've done. And I know that it's been a really incredibly difficult time. Um, I think the thing that has been incredible is how we've been able to watch and witness um, the resilience um, that people have exhibited, the incredible pivots um, that people have made. I know everyone's really sick of hearing that word. Um, the new technologies that have been employed the new relationships uh, or old rekindled relationships that have helped people leverage um, other businesses and other community partners to their benefit. Um, and all of the, the ways in which, you know, I, nobody is successful in retail if they aren't good at customer service and if they don't care about their customers, whether it's, you know, product mix or whether it's the way you train your team members to serve your customers or, uh, you know, making sure that, um, you know, that, that you're meeting people's needs. But there, there certainly was, you know, everything that we thought and knew and whatever everyone was already doing. Uh, to serve their customers was obviously completely turned upside down and people had to get really creative to find ways to get their products out the door and get their, uh, you know, to make sales and to actually deliver um, your product or services to your customers. And so um, I'm excited to be able to hear more stories and dive a little bit deeper into exactly how everyone did what they did in the last year. Um, and, and, and what tips and tricks you all have that you can share, particularly during our breakout sessions uh, with others that are here. Um, if people here aren't retailers, they are oftentimes, um, a lot of these folks are people who are in position to, to help other businesses and provide more ideas to them and to share some of um, what you will, will hear and share today with other, others in the community. Um, I think we all know the, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats and, and we want as many of our small businesses and our small, unique, locally owned retailers as possible to survive and to thrive because, I mean, at the end of the day, these are the businesses that make up the character of our community. 
Um, they play directly into the quality of life that people feel they have when they choose to come here and live here. Um, they play into why people want to visit our community. Um, you know, nobody wants to walk in a, a cute historic small downtown um, or down the commons and not find a unique mix of locally owned businesses and retailers, right? So it, it's all so important um, and, it, and it really does all um, tie in together. It, you know, this all overall, this all impacts the overall economic success of our entire community, um, you know, from many, many different angles. Um, I just wanted to share because I did get a chance to reach out directly to a number of our retailers that were located in different places throughout the community and different types of businesses towards the end of the last year um, to, to seek some feedback because, um, you know, and I, and I know Gary and Jan, I know, you know, we're all talking to a lot of businesses on a regular basis, but to really, really sort of get a sense of um, how did it go? How, how did your year really end up? How was your last quarter? How was the holiday season? Um, you know, what, when you really take a look back, um, how did everything um, end up? And, and actually a few of you that are here responded, uh, but a few, uh, many others did as well. And I'm just, you know, um, certainly blindly gonna share some of the observations that were shared with me because I found the responses really interesting. Um, I think generally the, the tone was, it wasn't as bad as people thought it was gonna be. Um, I actually asked these questions of people before they had yet had a chance to look at their year end or compare their numbers or really digest what had happened, right? Like it was just maybe 10 days or something after, you know, Jan the beginning of January after the holiday season had ended. Um, and I think as many of you might expect, people saw huge declines in certain sectors of their business, whether it was the customer base being different, right? Their typical customers, whether it's visitors, whether it's the colleges, uh, were not there or were not there um, remotely in the percentages they usually are. Um, but in some cases, the local community actually managed to make up for that decline. Um, local, uh, local consumers who maybe wouldn't normally do as much local shopping, really, I think in a big way, at least from the people that I heard from, um, managed to over the course of the year, maybe not all in December, maybe not all in just the last quarter, but managed to make up that difference or the, the majority of that difference. So that at the end of the day, year over year, um, most of the folks I heard from were actually either pretty steady, they may have been down just a little bit. I had people say they were up year over year that 2020 ended far better than 2019 did. Um, and, and, you know, it was just really, really interesting. And I, I expected to get a lot of different responses, but I didn't expect to get so many positive responses. Um, so I, you know, again, I'm sure we could find any handful or sample of businesses and get a different set of responses. And I, I think depending on the type of business and the location, obviously, um, some people were far more um, impacted than others. And I think the other thing that is just interesting to note as I glance through the responses I got, it was specifically what those businesses did to navigate the crisis and the ways that they utilized technology and the types of customer service that they offered um, that positioned them to manage uh, you know, a positive year end, to end up in a, in a, in a good place, in a positive place. Um, so, you know, that's why some of what we're going to talk about in, in the breakout session in the, in the smaller rooms is going to be really interesting. Um, you know, again, I, I, I think we have a lot to, to learn still. And I think, you know, the jury's probably still out on, on what last year really meant to a lot of businesses. I don't, I don't mean in any way to sugarcoat things because I think 2021 is gonna be another very complicated, very challenging year um, for this sector and particularly for our smallest businesses. Um, I think we hope to see continued expansions on reopening in different ways and, and, and fostering more economic activity. I think the state is moving in that direction, but there's a couple of things in particular that I'm watching and advocating for because um, I think 
you know, right now there's sort of this patchwork of regulations and different sectors and different types of events and businesses that have been managed, but we need something that's more consistent and, and crosses um, over all different types of, of gatherings and different types of doing business in a, in a more comprehensive way. Um, the other thing I think that's a little bit promising is just, you know, just in the last day or two, uh, the nationwide figures for January have come out and they show a lot of strength, actually. Um, January was significantly up year over year. Many of you might realize December was still actually down a little bit, uh, but, but people got their stimulus checks. And the, the good thing is that it looks like a lot of consumers are spending that money. Um, obviously what the government's trying to do is stimulate the economy, but what, what I think a lot of folks, depending on their income level, are probably sitting on a lot of that money. They're not necessarily going out and spending it. So to see the January sales figures, um, at least nationally, show that consumers are spending um, and, the, and the year over year the, the retail figures are up is a positive indicator. Again, we won't, we don't know yet how that, uh, how that you know, boils down to the local level. Um, waiting to hear actually whether we have any local sales tax receipt information yet to see what, what's actually happening in Tompkins County. Um, but at any rate, the, just wanted to set the stage a little bit with some of what I've heard and seen from people and, and been observing in the last um, several weeks and, and months here. And um, definitely looking forward to hearing from Gary and Jan because they, you know they might they might be hearing very you know different things or different mixes of things from what what I heard from folks as well. So um, Gary, why don't we turn it over to you and and Christina uh, from the Downtown Ithaca Alliance to share a bit more about um, where where you think retail's at in the community. Great. <clears throat> well, thank you, Jennifer. Um, yeah, hello everybody. Um, I'm Gary Ferguson with the Downtown Ithaca Alliance and joining me today is uh, uh, Christina Thalen, who's our, uh, uh, she really specializes in business support for our, our, our organization and is really our liaison with the, uh, well, with our downtown retail community. Um, I wanted to just give you a sort of a high level look at uh, some of the trends that, I, that I'm that I'm seeing or that uh, and sort of set the stage for her and for Jan and for others to talk further in more detail. So let me go right to that. I'll, I'll share my screen here if I can. Let's see. Um, yeah. How's that? Can you all see that? Let me. Uh... Looks good, Gary. Okay, I just need to. Um, uh, I just need to change it so I can read the read the numbers on the side. Um, I actually sat through a uh, uh, a presentation earlier um, uh, in uh, about a, a le within within the week from a group called uh, um, uh, uh, Retail Coach, um, and and it's a national retail support organization. Um, and uh, they were pr providing us with some information. And one of the things that just sort of struck me was, uh, uh, I'll show you a couple slides. Uh, um, I'm trying to move your, all your pictures so I can actually see. Um, um, but, um, how do we do it? there we go, that got it. Um, so um, uh, hopefully you can see this map. I mean, this map basically, and, 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 and the chart along the side really makes a couple simple points. One is that um, the pandemic <coughs> and the and the impacts of of the pandemic on retail were not felt evenly, um, and that comes as no surprise to any of us. Uh, but uh, one of the things you can see here is it varied by state, uh, and it also varied by uh, by by type. Um, the, the 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 green states, the, the ones that are colored green on this map. Are the ones that actually uh, actually fared fairly well. Uh, the one, the darker, the uh, the more the more orange they became, the more likely they were to uh, not fare well. Um, and then you know, so you see New York sort of being in that group that is uh, is is what was down. Um, but then over here, you can see in general uh, for the period from the start of the pandemic through the end of January. Um, um, uh, there was a, a loss. The, the national over the national change in retail was about a little over eighteen percent negative, um, and that again it varied widely by 
the type of business you were. Uh, if you were in the apparel business, for example, you pretty much mirrored the national average. Um, if you were electronics, you pretty much broke even. If you were, if uh, as as we probably all recognize, if you're in home improvement, um, you you're 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 doing well. Home improvement businesses really have uh, blossomed during this period of time when many of us are stuck at home, and uh, we wanted to make our home feel a little bit better. Um, uh, obviously, you know, it, again, depending on what you were and where you were, uh, the, the lodging industry, uh, the fitness industry uh, struggled mightily, as did, as did dining. Um, uh, shopping centers and malls themselves uh, uh, did disproportionately worse than the national average. Um, so, I mean, that's just a, a, a sense of um, the, the takeaway here is that th nothing was even. Everything was everything depended on where you were and what you were selling. I think that the next thing I wanted to sort of share with you was sort of what's really happening in New York and what does that mean for New York? Um, and, and here's a sense of, uh, uh, of again, from the, um, from the retail coach company, uh, a national, again, the national firm. Uh, what I'm showing you here is year over year foot traffic changes. So these aren't necessarily sales, but this is actually foot traffic in and out of the businesses. Uh, and overall in New York, foot traffic was reported to be down a little bit, about 25%. In the apparel industry, it was down nearly almost 40%. And the dining, you know, in dining, it was down 45, 46%. Uh, so again, very dramatically. And as we know, fitness, um, you know, fitness, fitness centers weren't able to open for some a number of time. And even now they're at, they're at, they're at, you know, scaled back capacity. So, uh, they're down substantially. So uh, depending on who you are, uh, again, your, uh, uh, the, the, your foot traffic varied significantly. And this is, in, this is in New York state itself. This is not national. So within our own state, this is what we're seeing happening. Um, and it, um, uh, it, and I'll show you a couple of statistics in a minute relating to Ithaca, but uh, you know, it's, uh, we, we are not too dissimilar. Um, the last uh, thing I wanted to show you from the retail coach uh, presentation that I saw the other day, uh, this struck me uh, substantially. Um, one of their slides really, uh, I mean, look at this, in, in, a, in a matter of 90 days uh, during the pandemic, from the start of the pandemic till, you know, really to summer, um, we aged, or, or the, let's put it this way, uh, the consumer that, consumer and business adoption of digital technology for retail shopping changed the equivalent of 10 years. So uh, one of the things that's just tremendous, and, and, and this is really, we can't state this enough, is that um, this pandemic and this, this uh, you know, this activity that's gone on that's affected all of our lives, uh, has really had significant impact in how we procure things as, as consumers and how we sell things as businesses. And, and, and it's, it, has, it is perhaps the most dramatic change, uh, literally, in, in, at least in our lifetimes in terms of the, of, of the speed and rapidity of what has happened. Uh, so I, I just wanted to show that. Now let me just quickly, I will go and show you uh, uh, um, oops, no. One second, I, I, I have to redo this again. And here. Here are, uh, here are some things that are more Ithaca specific. Um, and these are really my observations. Um, uh, and with the, the first one is uh, we have pedestrian counters on the uh, downtown Ithaca Commons and around it. Um, and we can tell you, I mean, it, it, it's varied from month to month, from day to day, uh, but in general, over that period of time, it's about a 50% decrease in foot traffic on the pedestrian mall. Uh, now, again, it's, 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 it's edged up in different times and it's edged back, uh, but it's been about a 50% decrease in foot traffic based on the, the, the high-tech uh, pedestrian counters that we have mounted throughout the downtown area. Um, so, I mean, so that mirrors what you've been sort of seeing statewide and nationally. 
Um, the other thing, I, I, mean, I mean, a couple other things that we've seen, and obviously I, this, the slide I put just a minute ago accented that, there's been a tremendous increase in online sales for our, our local businesses. Um, we estimated that less than 20% of our businesses uh, two years ago had online selling capabilities. Today, that's close, that's around 50% and growing. So again, the, the, the changes that have taken place in the last year have been tremendous. Um, there's obviously been a significant increase in pickup and delivery business uh, from very, very little before the pandemic to quite a bit now. And then uh, and the, I guess the other thing would be the options uh, of how people shop and how proprietors want their people, want their customers to shop are vary dramatically from business to business, particularly in among our small businesses. At a national level, there's I see there's more contiguity, but at the micro level, at, at the type of businesses that we have, you'll find a lot of variation from business to business. Uh, a couple quick demographic trends. Um, uh, certainly in downtown, visitors and tourists were really important uh, 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 sector uh, during the summer and fall of 2020, um, uh, and, and, and along, you know, obviously along with the, with the local people who came out to support, uh, Ithaca and, and Tompkins County really did a really great job of, I think, letting people know that we were a safe place to come visit, and 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 a lot of people did come and do that, and that made a big difference. Uh, um, and what's interesting is our visitors, when they evaluate risk, uh, I mean, they certainly look, they, their risk, it's risk relative to where they come from. So if they live in New York City, if they live in Paramus, New Jersey, if they live in Philadelphia, uh, they're evaluating us based on where they come from. And oftentimes we're, you know, we are far, far safer as a place to come and visit. Uh, and I think that plays to our advantage now and in the future. Um, um, in terms of, um, um, of where people are coming from, I mentioned New York City and just other drivable reg regions, uh, uh, regional locations around us. Uh, that's where that, the folks tend to come. Uh, local residents, um, I mean, one of the things, my observation, and I'm curious to see what others have to say about this. I mean, I, to me, risk seems to be somewhat age related. Uh, the younger you are, I think the more likely you are to say it's not as risky as perhaps, I, you know, as, as people make it out to be. Uh, uh, the older you are, the more likely you might be to uh, see things a little differently. So I'm curious to see what others think about that as well. Um, finally, the last sort of slide I wanted to just uh, focus on was this notion of, for, you know, just forecast, a couple of prognostications looking forward. And one is the notion that online is here to stay. Those changes that were made, uh, that the retail coaching people re referenced, those tremendous uh, 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 leaps in terms of how consumers and how, how businesses operate, um, uh, they're not going to go away. Um, and so how we react to that and how we deal with that as businesses will have a lot to say about how well we succeed in the future. Uh, so I, that's one item to keep in mind very closely. The other, th I mean, secondly, um, you know, it wasn't more than a year ago, I know I and other people were touting the importance of experiential re retailing. That the thing that differentiated us from online buying, from mall buying, from big box buying was what I would call experiential retailing. Uh, it, you know, it's the touch and feel and talk and have the opportunity to do one on one with the owner and the manager. Um, but yet here we are in a pandemic when those sorts of things are sort of frowned upon. Um, so I, I put that the future of experiential retailing, I think, is yet to be written. Uh, I think it will be positive. I think it will return. I think that is has been and will continue to be a, a, a asset that our, down, that, our, that our businesses, our small businesses in downtown and around the community you know, have. But uh, uh, it's one of the things we're watching very, very closely because all of a sudden experiential went from being essential 
to being something that people were really worried about. Um, it gets to me to the point about bricks and mortar retailing will need to promote their advantages. Uh, uh, it's so easy for people to click and spend. Uh, uh, I think there are obvious advantages that bricks and mortar retailing have. Uh, and, and we as a community, as, as interest groups and as individual businesses are going to be really hard pressed to spend time to promote those advantages to our public and to our, and to our, to our target audiences. Um, I mean, the last point I'd make, and then I'll turn it over to Christina, is that I, you know, all my reading and research suggests that uh, while retail is clearly in flux, and it started changing even before the pandemic, and obviously the pandemic has, has accelerated a lot of different things. Uh, the sense is that downtowns and community centers will be poised to recover, uh, and I think as well or better than uh, you know, other portions of the community. Um, um, again, I think we have the uniqueness, we have the local flavor, uh, we, we have a lot of the things uh, that simply are not obtainable online. And so that's, I think, one of the things that's going to suit us well going into the future. With that, I stop and turn it over to Christina. Yes, thank you, Gary. Thank you for sharing those slides. Boy, seeing those numbers in black and white is completely sobering those national numbers as well as the statewide numbers. Um, thank you for sharing that. Data is hugely important and more important and tells a better story than just the anecdotal um, feels. So yes, uh, retail has definitely been hurting and been in a huge um, identity crisis, I would say, uh, since the beginning of this pandemic. And uh, there was, you know, a complete shutdown and a scrambling to completely shift paradigms for people who were operating their business completely in one way. Um, and then the online sales being just a minor role, if a role at all in a downtown or small business. Um, so a lot of folks really spent a lot of time um, building their online presence during that time of shutdown. And it really behooved them and they managed to muddle through. And now uh, we're kind of being faced with the idea of how do you keep that up? Um, how do you add that to your uh, you know, list of things that you offer the public? Uh, how do you keep delivering on those promises that you've now spent all this time kind of creating? Um, and with obviously the pandemic creating a lot of chaos within um, the employment uh, in these small businesses has been really difficult. And I absolutely give small businesses kudos for still delivering their customer service in the face of just continual challenges, as well as the normal challenges to small business, because life has definitely gone on. People have expanded, people have moved, people have had floods. People have had, you know, all manner of disruptions that are just kind of normal life chaos uh, to having a small business and just being in existence. Um, so it's been extra um, difficult. Um, and uh, there's definitely going to be a reckoning of managing these new experiences and behaviors and keeping it uh, integrate, integrated into your offerings as well as um, creating this higher level of sophistication uh, with the different um, methods people are communicating to their customer base through. Um, that being said, uh, folks have definitely been doing a great job. <laughs> um, I realize uh, that it's going to be very hard for them to keep up um, between curbside pickup, delivery, local delivery, um, shipping, as well as now letting people into their stores. Uh, the curbside pickup additions, as well as the kind of alternative ways that they were trying to reach customers um, was kind of expected to go away a little bit as people were allowed back into spaces. Um, but we've seen that that's definitely been keeping up as far as customer um, desire and customer drive. So that's created quite um, 
a bigger task for everybody to overcome constantly. Um, and, and like Gary said, definitely um, a lot of folks have been shifting to their online presence and working on building that out more. Uh, we as an organization understand and recognize that there's definitely a need for more support for small businesses in getting in, in reaching those goals and reaching those capabilities. And for some people, it was not as difficult of a hump. And for other people, it's just seems like going to the moon. Um, and there's all kinds of shades in between. Um, so for instance, we are working on a program with the uh, SBA, Bob uh, Griffin at the SBA and the local SBDC with Lindsay Wolf to potentially create a program to help folks be connected to um, online retail spaces that could be hoove and fit well with their business and then also give them a little bit of a grant at the end of the program to help them reach their goal, whatever their goal might be, um, because everybody is definitely at a different level um, than others. Some people need to actually get to that next level, even higher, make online sales even better, um, and then some people just need to start. And then there's a whole variety in between. Um, so we recognize that that's definitely a need within our local community, as well as nationally, um, all small businesses are dealing with this um, undeniable fact that online is here to stay and they're going to need to reckon uh, with that need and uh, rise to the occasion. And it's going to be difficult uh, since there's so many ways that people are trying to continue their customer satisfaction and customer service and doing really well at it, but it is a lot of pressure. Um, I also agree with Gary's uh, summations that uh, in-person retail is to be determined, but is incredibly hopeful. Um, people have, um, you know, separation anxiety <laughs> at this point. I mean, it's so great to see your faces even just on this screen here. We are animals, you know, we like to interact with people in person. We do, um, and I, I feel confident that people are gonna really search, seek out and search for those connections again, once uh, the vaccine has become even more um, administered and the, the numbers start really significantly going down locally as well as nationally. So I feel strongly that there is a definite, there's going to be a definite call and a need and a desire and a resurgence around small and local business and that connectivity of the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, that has always been a thing. And I think it will continue to be a thing because that's incredibly unique and important in our interactions as humans. And with that, I will send it over to Jan. Okay, am I, can you all hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, well, I fear that maybe we're running a little over, so I will try to be, uh, be a little succinct. Everybody has said so much uh, that I might have said. I can, I can speak to a few different areas um, with my local first Ithaca hat, my DeWitt Mall merchant hat, my vendor and board member of Ithaca Farmers Market and small business owner of Silk Oak and um, Ithaca Made, which is in the DeWitt Mall. Um, so in terms of like national projections and figures that we have thus far for Ithaca, which are obviously not, not complete yet for, for the last quarter and for December, but nationally it's it's projected that this entire pandemic year is going to result in about 30% of local businesses closing. Um, you know, we have already seen some close in our community. We've even seen some very large businesses um, go out. And uh, the, the loss of small businesses in particular um, as Jennifer mentioned, small business kind of makes our community the unique and vibrant place to live, work, and visit that it is. Um, I was just recently looking at uh, the Ithaca Business Index that uh, Ilya Kassiper at uh, Ithaca College does. 
And uh, he pointed out that the low point for sales uh, in Ithaca was April and December. While we did have a rebound, it was down five and a half percent from from 2019 and overall the year was 11.5% uh, down from the year before. And as Gary was pointing out, there are wildly different uh, amounts of uh, loss or gain depending. I mean, I know if you were making face masks, you had a banner year last year. Um, but uh, for Local First Ithaca, you know, one thing in the 13 years that we've been around that we have tried to do is educate people about the importance of supporting locally independently owned businesses. And uh, initially, nobody had the concept at all. They thought if it was your local Barnes and Noble, then it was a local business. And we've worked very hard um, to educate people. And over the years, as American Express and others have jumped on the bandwagon with um, you know, Small Business Saturday, people's consciousness has been raised. And over the last number of years, we definitely were seeing a resurgence for local businesses in, um, in traffic to, to brick and mortars. Um, this past year, uh, basic, I've been following for a number of years what the National Retail Federation says about um, increase or decrease in sales. And um, basically, uh, in 2020, the brick and mortar fell overall 14%, but e-commerce rose 18%. So when you see the numbers, it's, uh, it's not always indicative of what it's like on the ground in your local community. Um, as an example, in the DeWitt Mall, as we've been trying to come back, there, um, there are a number of businesses that have still not reopened since last year. And the same thing is true all over the community. Personally for Ithaca Made, we were closed for three months that was mandatory that we be closed by the state because we were not an essential business. And then I foolishly expanded my business to a bigger space next door and uh, it took another two months to build that out. So we were closed for almost almost half of the year. Um, farmer's Market, uh, Jennifer used a very, very um, apt word, pivot is one that we're all using a lot. And um, Farmer's Market definitely had to do some significant, significant pivoting given that you know we're all in person down there. And over the last year, it's been a real learning experience. We had a number of businesses that closed or moved away to states that were more open than we were. Um, and we have instituted for the winter, we're doing um, curbside pickup and online ordering up at Trip Hammer, which will continue when we move, when we move back to Steamboat Landing. And we've even started selling out of the back of our, um, of our booths. But the fact is that overall the traffic everywhere, whether it's downtown or at farmer's market has been so restricted that um, for some businesses, there isn't the critical amount of foot traffic to actually um, give you enough people in the door that, that it's worth some businesses reopening. So um, speaking to what uh, Gary was talking about with experiential, I think actually, while there's truth to that, we're finding that customers are hungry for connection. Um, we're fortunate in the Ithaca area that the local community is, I think, statistically much much higher in their support for local businesses. And we have seen that time and time again over the last year, but customers will come into the store or come to farmer's market and they are so pleased and excited to be able to talk to another human being and purchase the things that they want. And so I think, I think going forward um, that what we, what we really need to do is not only focus on certainly sticking with the online, which has had, as Gary said, just you know, an exponential increase um, 
And I know personally in my own business, Silk Oak has been online for 25 years and it's never been a huge portion of the income, but even with local people choosing to order online, that dramatically increased this past year. Um, so I think as we go forward, um, being able to, um, as downtown Ithaca has done a beautiful job of letting people know that it's safe to come back, that, uh, that we're protecting ourselves and them, but also um, focusing on the reasons why uh, local and in person makes such a difference um, to the overall quality of life in the community and letting people know who are concerned about in-person interactions, letting them know that curbside is available, delivery is available, online is available. Um, and I guess the last thing that, that Local First Ithaca was really trying to do was to, um, to stimulate people as numbers started to improve, stimulate people in the community to actually step out again and experience the local businesses that were reopening. And uh, in the past, the guide to being local has been a strong driver of that. Um, unfortunately, because businesses were closed, people weren't buying their guides, so they didn't have them. And we realized that even though it would be a loss for local for Stithica, what was more important was to get these in people's hands. So um, with a, a huge amount of help from um, DIA, we gifted a few thousand uh, guides to being local. And, uh, and it was gratifying to hear from not only customers saying that they were thrilled to, uh, to get out and use their coupons, but hearing from businesses that it actually, it actually did, did make a difference. So I guess to close, I think that the important thing going forward is for us to continue to, um, to do what we do best, which is to be creative entrepreneurs, to pull together as a community, um, to look to other communities that are, that are doing it right for some, some new ideas and, um, and to, to be prepared to continue to pivot as we go forward. Thank you. Thanks, Jan. Um, David, I'm gonna put back to you. Um, appreciate all of that information and those presentations. Um, awesome. We are probably a little shorter on time than we'd hope, but we definitely still have some time to do our breakout sessions and David's gonna walk us through how that'll work. Yeah, we have time. So uh, I will reduce the time from 20 to 15 minutes. And I went ahead for the sake of time and put everybody in some breakout groups. Um, the three topics that we'll be discussing today are technology and digital solutions. And all of these are through the retail lens, technology and digital solutions, customer satisfaction, safety and accessibility, and collaborations and partnerships. Uh, we do have some local partners and business owners here that are going to be guiding us in these discussions. So tackling technology and digital solutions to get us started is Mr. Aaron Robitz from Trip Hammer Wine and Spirits. Um, helping us facilitate some conversations around customer satisfaction, safety, and accessibility will be Lisa Swayze from Buffalo Street Books. And lastly, we have Mr. Ian Golden from Finger Lake Running Club Company, um, who will be talking about collaborations and partnerships. So I would just say, come with any ideas of things that you've seen that have worked really well in the community, some things that you've done um, in these areas in the community, and just feel free to share and be open and we're going to take a little field trip into breakout room territory. Um, so again, 15 minutes, I'll be popping in and out, in and out of rooms. Uh, we also have our panelists that will be in some of these rooms. Jennifer will be joining the discussion around collaboration and partnerships. Gary and Christina will be in customer satisfaction, safety and accessibility. And I have Jan helping out with or just being present at the technology and digital solutions conversation. All right, so 15 minutes, I'm sending everybody off into their rooms right now. All right, so everyone should be back. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah, all right, excellent. So I, I just wanted to say thank you again to Ian, Aaron, and Lisa for getting us started.
breakout room sessions. Really appreciate that. Um, we do have about three more minutes remaining, and I did just want to open up the floor and open up the space for anyone who may have had some questions for our panelists or something that they wanted to share from a breakout session that they thought was really inspiring so that people that were in another room may want to hear anything that you discussed in one of your three rooms. At least from our room, I think we could have just used more time. And I think it's insightful hearing the uh, some of the top line uh, figures. But in terms of, I, I would guess most of us have a good sense of what's going on in terms of out there. There are some pockets that really benefited. There are some uh, pockets that didn't. I think there's so many variables that you can read into the stats, for instance, that uh, Gary uh, presented uh, in terms of how you uh, filter or, or look at those stats and reasoning behind that. Um, so I guess it, it would have been nice in terms of an actual uh, benefit to potentially people uh, on the calls to just have more time to really dig in and be useful. That's a good perspective. Thank you, Ian. Uh, Mr. Zufall, I see you down there with your hand raised. What you got? I have my hand raised. Oh, did I see you raise your hand? Like this <laughs> no, or I was you? adjusting the volume on my, on my, I'm on ah. a in a mini. It happens. It happens to um, the best of us. Yeah, but I, I will say, um, since you called on me. It was interesting to hear what Christina had to say earlier about sort of the, the challenges that everybody has moving to um, online platforms. And for those of you that are still doing that, I just want to encourage you to think about not just the front end of, you know, where you are accepting sales and accepting orders. Um, and obviously I'm biased because this is the business I'm in, but think about um, the actual infrastructure you're going to need on the back end in your store in order to process that. You know, do you have the equipment to do that? Um, do you have the connections that you need to do that? Um, with the retailers I've worked with, you know, I've found that they've, you know, I, I've run into situations where somebody has set up a great online store, but once they're accepting orders, you know, they're on their little personal owned 13 inch laptop, you know, trying to process all these orders and, and get Get things pushed through so just that's not that we need anything any other things to be you know stressed out about but that's just something I'd, I'd like to encourage everybody to think about as they move to you know building a robust uh, online sales infrastructure that actually works for you and doesn't create more work awesome thank you i knew you'd have some great perspectives to share aaron thank you so much um, did anyone else have another question or something they'd like to highlight or share? Approached our 115 time. Hello. Are you right, ready? Cool. Um, before I just throw it out to Jennifer to close, I do want to thank you all again for being here today. Uh, thank you for the insight that was provided by our panelists from Jan, Gary, Christina, and Jennifer. Thank you again to Lisa. Aaron and Ian for the time. I did see that Jennifer put in the chat that we will try. This may be something that may be fun to do for like a learn series type thing to bring everybody back and do longer breakout sessions and maybe even poll the membership a little bit to see what are some things they'd like to discuss more um, and then reach back out to business owners to try to create some very specific breakout sessions but that people can pick and choose what they would like to go to and have some deeper conversations with like-minded people in the community. I think that would be a really good idea and something to come out of this. Um, Jennifer, was there anything else you wanted to add before I close this up? I really don't have much else, um, but I, you know, again, just gratitude for everyone who made time for this today. It never feels like there's enough time once we, you know, finally get into good discussions. Um, so yeah. um, I, I definitely think many of you are, uh, are, some of you have attended and any of you are, um, you know, within the category size for our small business roundtables, which is a place where often issues per pertaining to retail and, and, and smaller, um, smaller businesses in those uh, sectors come up. Um, but I think something specifically just, you know, to, to further some of these conversations and, and um, highlight just our retail partners is, is certainly in order. So um, we will look forward to that and try to make some time. Um, and again, just really impressed with, um, you know, the tenacity and the resilience and the ingenuity and all the different things that people did to navigate the last year. Um, I know we have some more difficult times coming up, but I, again, I think 
you know, balancing sort of the hopeful moments and the promising things with, you know, recognizing there's still a lot of hard work ahead of us and that we all need to continue supporting each other um, and working really hard together. Um, you know, I, the chamber is here for you, the DIA and Local First Ithaca are also, um, I know everyone is, is here to support you. And, um, you know, again, just thanks everyone for being here and we will see you soon. All right, awesome. Again, before we close, just a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsors. Again, many of them are here on the call today. Hilton Garden Inn, Bailey Place Insurance, Shrava Walker, and Sheldrake Point Winery. Thank you all for helping make Net at Noon possible. Um, be sure to check the tank chamber gram for our next networking at noon in March. And while we do have our diversity, equity, and inclusion series happening, the first one is happening on February 25th. Uh, that one is sold out or filled at this point to capacity, but the next ones that we will be having are March 17th and March 31st. So be on the lookout for those. Uh, both of them are up on the website to register for in advance. And lastly, I do wanna do a plug for the Fab Five Young Professionals Award celebration that's taking place virtually on March 4th. Uh, all the information and all the winners have been announced. And in the chamber gram that just went up on Tuesday, um, the registration link and all the information to sign up for that is there as well as on the chamber website. So please, if you get the chance, come out and support some of our young professionals here in the community that are doing some amazing things year round, but definitely rose to the occasion during this pandemic time. It would be great to come out and show them some love and some support um, as they accept their awards. All right, so again, thank you all for being here. Thank you for our participants. Uh, I've got something special in the mail that I'll be sending to all the panelists and to the presenters today. Thank you all so much and have a great rest of your week and we'll be in touch soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thanks, Bye. Bye, thank you so much.